Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The Sonar Med airway monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. For this segment of the series, a discussion on unplanned extubation in the NICU. We will be discussing uses of the dope mnemonic in the NICU. To help answer this question is Nikki Davidson, a master's level trained nurse who works at a level four NICU in a dual capacity role at the bedside and in quality assurance and process improvement. In the modern era, the dope mnemonic is a friend of the NICU nurse and of the respiratory provider and is used whenever troubleshooting the airway of an intubated patient who is decompensating. DOPE stands for displacement, obstruction, pneumothorax, and equipment failure. Before we go any further, I would like to share a quick anecdote about the origins of the dope mnemonic. As the story goes, in the 1950s, plumbers and oil workers used a chemical sealant called pipe dope to repair and seal their broken pipes. They also used the phrase, don't forget dope, to remind them to apply the substance while also helping them to remember their troubleshooting checklist, which was pipe displacement, pipe obstruction, pneumatic pump to check for air leaks, and equipment failure in testing hydraulics, etc. Well, one day the plumbers fixing a broken pipe in the OR were discussing their dope pneumonic in front of the anesthesiologist as well as his residents and staff one of whom reportedly later applied the mnemonic to troubleshooting the intubated airway, or so the story goes. Okay, so here you are on your shift, minding your own business, when out of nowhere, your intubated baby starts decompensating. What do you do? Don't panic and don't forget dope. Let's break it down in more detail. D is for displacement. When you're troubleshooting displacement, you're really just checking two things. First, is your ET tube too deep, resulting in right main stemming? Or secondly, has the ET tube dislodged from the trachea and now resides somewhere in the back of the throat? You're gonna do three things to verify. Inspect. You're looking for equal chest rise for good placement, as well as vapor movement within the tube to verify proper position in the trachea. You're going to listen. You're listening for equal breath sounds. Notably, if breath sounds are louder on the right side, you may be right main stemming. Last, you're checking your end tidal CO2. So if you're already hooked up to your vent, you can check your capnography waveform to give you insights regarding ET tube positioning. If you look on the slide on the right corner, uh, there's a capnography reference which shows a flat waveform scenario. If you have a flat waveform scenario, you may suspect an unplanned extubation has occurred. The other way to test is to use a colorimetric CO2 detector to confirm the presence of CO2, hence your inferred position in the airway. And I was always taught uh, it's good as gold or yellow is yes. O, O is for obstruction. When you're troubleshooting an obstruction, what you're really trying to determine is whether or not there's a mucus plug, kinking, or a blood clot within the tube. You may have already suspected an obstruction if the infant has a history of thick or copious secretions, some of which may have actually built up inside the tube. But you're essentially relying on getting a good change of shift report for that one, or having already been a primary caregiver for the patient and having already known this about them. If the infant's saturations and heart rate stabilize after suctioning, you may have successfully navigated the challenge and resolved or even prevented an obstructed ET tube. 
However, it should be noted that success in this endeavor will be dependent on your suctioning skills. P is for pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is a tough one. It's really a process of elimination until a chest X-ray can be obtained. In the meantime, it can be a bit nebulous. For example, say I auscultate and only hear breath sounds on the right, but not the left. Based on that information, I can't say definitively if I have a left-sided pneumothorax or if I'm right main stemming. Troubleshooting steps are gonna be similar to those of displacement with the additional step of transillumination for smaller babies to check for a collapsed lung. Again, this only really works for smaller neonates, but the concept is that when the transilluminator is pressed against the skin, if there's a pneumothorax, the pocket of air around that collapsed lung will allow the light to pass through, as compared with a fully expanded lung, which will not. E is for equipment failure. The best way to test for an equipment failure is to take your equipment out of the equation and see if the infant improves. This means disconnecting from your vent and manually bagging your baby. In summary, when do we use the dope mnemonic? The dope mnemonic is a helpful troubleshooting tool for the bedside nurse and the respiratory care team to evaluate and treat the potential causes of a decompensating intubated patient. The mnemonic stands for displacement, obstruction, pneumothorax, and equipment failure. Hey guys, you made it to the end of the podcast. Well done. Thanks for tuning into this installment regarding uses and function of the dope mnemonic. Until next time, don't panic and don't forget dope. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series, wherever you find your podcasts. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.